This episode is brought to you by Third Wave Water. So you all know me as Team Wine, duh. But during the day, my allegiances actually lie with Team Coffee. Like many of you probably understand, though, I have a bad habit of spending way too much money on takeout coffee because the coffee I make at home just never tastes as good. So sorry, Em, forget wine and milkshake facts. I have a coffee fact for you that just might blow your mind. So coffee shops spend thousands of dollars to make the perfect water for making coffee. And now for as little as 10 cents per cup, you can duplicate that magic at home. Third Wave Water has a patent-pending formula of minerals that, when added to a gallon of distilled water, makes coffee brewing magic. Recently, at the U.S. Brewers' Cup Championship, which, hello, where can I sign up, both the first and second place finishers brewed their coffee with Third Wave Water. Check out their website at thirdwavewater.com and use promo code WHYWEDRINK for 10% off your order. Enjoy! it's go time okay well wait when does this come in when does this air? <gasps> it's my birthday no it's my birthday no oh, wait, it's my birthday we air it on the night of my birthday but it comes out on your birthday anyway happy birthday thank you happy birthday to you i mean it's belated but we celebrated a whole week ago now oh my gosh so much fun though it was the best weekend ever em took me to an escape room with all my friends she i did i never me. asked you how you felt about it because i left like right afterwards it was so fun yeah we got a cool photo with a fake dead guy mm-hmm. we solved some clues the yeah. people we were with were kind of weird, but they kind of had, like, an attitude problem, if you ask me. Honestly, yeah. Well, I felt bad. Well, they're never going to hear those, so who cares? But uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I felt so bad for Blaze. Like, that poor guy, he had the answer to everything. Okay, I didn't notice, and he... That was... I was, like, the only person. He kept looking at me, and he was like, I said that, right? And I was like, yeah, 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 I heard. I heard you say that 20 minutes ago. He was ago. so pissed. Not pissed, but he was like listen every time he gave an idea of how to get out everyone ignored him and then 20 minutes later they would come up that with one that guy idea would be like oh i got it and, he's and then like, i would have said that 10 times poor blaze is like i already said that i already said that i already said that but so basically the bottom line is you're with a good guy because you would get out of a house 20 minutes earlier than we ever did <laughs> a so. house with a cannibal in it good good i feel better about my life but Anyway, it was a great weekend. We had a lot of fun sharing our birthday. Weekend. We got good presents. If you're a five dollar donator or mm-hmm. higher, yeah, I think so. Then uh, you get to listen to a mini episode of us opening our presents for each other. Although I'm sure it's not actually a mini episode because it's absolutely not. But okay. it's <laughs> just like a whole extra episode. It's a gift exchange episode, and there's a lot of yelling and excitement. If you would like to hear it. You can donate at our Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com. And, uh, yeah, we had a good birthday. We had a great birthday. We had great. a sleepover. <gasps> yeah. We had a sleepover. M, I'm drinking this week. I'm going to jump ahead because M made me watch this movie called Sinister. And <laughs> I knew she was going to force me to do it. So I went to the bathroom and I took, I was like, I'll be right back. And I took a bunch of melatonin. Yeah. She and, totally betrayed my trust. And just Zoloft and then was like, hi, I'm here for the movie. And then like. Was Im- out cold immediately. Like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I kept waking up and we were watching it with my brother who is, by the way, traumatized for life. And I kept waking up like at weird scenes and just trying to pretending like I had been awake. So I would comment commentate the whole yeah movie. but him and i both knew the whole time you <laughs> had been sleeping through it there were a few times where we both like ran past you during the movie to like try and get really? you open your- yeah <laughs> oh we like waved in front of your face and then 10 minutes later you'd be like whoa look at that and it's i'd like- be like wow look at the lighting in this scene and you <laughs> guys are like what the really, fuck christine <laughs> shut up we know you're sleeping i tried really hard but honestly the for opening movie of that scene is for a family hanging from a tree and i was like nope i'm out of here my Goodbye. sister and i saw it together not knowing what we were gonna see nope and it was actually one of the scarier movies i've ever watched and i don't watch scary movies so em goes let's watch this together at our sleepover <laughs> so and then i wanted someone to be as traumatized as i was well, at one point he she actually so I got it with your brother yeah she actually wrote my brother into that plan um <laughs> he chose to sit out there he could have left i bailed and and he had to suffer but i don't regret a thing that's my story so anyway now we're older Old. than we were so elderly <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> happy birthday to you Okay, guys, we're here. I told you why I drink. Why do you drink? Mm. Oh, I drink because last night I had to go to Walmart in the middle of the night because my computer <laughs> decided to have like this like horrible malware adware <gasps> problem. Oh, shit. And I was trying to research the story and we were meeting today. So I was like, I have to get this fixed now. And so 
in the middle of the night, I had to go to Walmart and get an external hard drive, okay, which was expensive. Okay, pause. Earlier, Em told me... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm trash. I know I am. Earlier, Em told me, you know, I really had to go to Walmart last night because I really wanted some chicken broccoli Alfredo. No, so that's I, not how I told so you. So I bought a family-style package, and now the story is that she had to research no, for no, the no. podcast. No, 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 you're, you're jumbling words, man. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so... I, yes, I had to go to Walmart. For, While I was there, I had a hankering for Alfredo. Okay, we'll go with that story then. No, that's the first story. Okay, so anyway, I had to get an external hard drive. They're I, expensive. They are expensive, so I like lost all this money. And um, Again, our Patreon page. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to take everything off my laptop just in case. Look, well, actually, the Apple Store today went really well, but in case they had to delete everything off my computer, I need one to take that's it smart. off ahead of time. And they fixed my computer in like five minutes, so I was able to do the story. Oh, that's nice. Did they replace the cover? Because on mine, they replaced it. No, they literally just like downloaded some weird oh, software and just killed whatever was going on. They were like, they had to fix mine. I forget what happened, but I probably spilled wine on it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but they fixed it and they replaced the whole outside and the screen. So it was all, sh it looked brand new. And oh, I, felt I like didn't get that treatment. It was so nice. I felt like I had a new computer. Well, I'll be sending in a review to Mark at Apple. For <laughs> but, it, but mine was over three days. And I had to drive to that stupid Beverly Hills Center, so. Oh, no. I live literally within walking distance of an Apple store now. Oh, as nice. I triangulate my position in oh. the world. And uh, it, I got, I, my appointment is, was at 1030, and I was out by, like, 1050. It was the... Are you, it, on, a, on Memorial Day? It was one of those... What is happening? It was one of those Apple store experiences that they would want to film for a commercial. So, like, <laughs> maybe they were filming everyone. a commercial. <laughs> it is LA. Maybe they I were I was filming. shocked. I was like, I'm done now? And he was like, yep, that's it. And I was like, my... Are you... Are you sure? <laughs> it's going to be a commercial that's, like, real-life customers get... Yeah. Prime treatment. Yeah. From market Apple. So, anyway, that's... I drink because I had to go buy an external hard drive that I actually didn't need. Well, I'm glad that you have it now because it does help. Mm -hmm. I have had one for many years and I love it. What's what's in your box of <laughs> wine today? Uh, you know, um, it's a bag filled with goodness. Cabernet or Shiraz? Shiraz. Mm. It's a Shirazi kind of day. Um, what about you? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> you just gave you the evil eye. Uh, <laughs> so I just found this diner on the way to you mm -hmm. and it had a list of like 50 milkshakes <gasps> which means for the next 50 episodes i have somewhere to go thank god she'll be here guys for the next 50 ups 49 episodes <laughs> and uh i'm starting with this one it's the elvis so it's chocolate peanut butter banana awesome it's Did actually surprisingly good but didn't he eat pickles on his sandwiches no it was bacon oh bacon that's what it was which i wouldn't have been against <laughs> if they stuck bacon in there Ugh. sometimes sometimes you gotta you gotta stretch your limits <laughs> M's wise quote of the day. <laughs> um, I did want to do a couple little things. Okay, but do them quick because you're going to have to edit this. I know, I know. Now I'm okay, sweating. Okay, go fast. I'm Rapid sweating fire. with anxiety. Okay, Tessa Lene messaged me on Twitter, us on Twitter, mm -hmm. and she was like, told me we just need to give her a little shout out and send some love her way because all I'm going to say is she was not treated right by a man. Ugh. And I'm, I don't want to give all her, you know. He personal. sounds like a dick. He is a dick. Okay. So Tessa Lene. And also she and her best friend listen to us regularly. And she was like, thank you for helping me get through. She moved out of her boyfriend's place and got her own place. And she's living alone for the first time. And she's like, thank you for being there. Aww. I know. And I was like, fuck him. <laughs> like, I got I'll tell so you, angry. I was with a girl forever who was just the fucking worst. So yeah. I... I'm totally there with you. We're, it was yep. beyond the worst experience of my entire life. So I, I got you a thousand percent. He did not treat you right, and we don't support that. Maybe send him uh, this episode where we tell him he's a piece of shit. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. Okay. Okay. Um, and then next thing is that Tina uh, actually was the one who suggested my last story about the Pompin sisters. Mm-hmm. And she messaged me like, oh, hi, that was me. And I was like, oh, shit. So oh, I'm hi, sorry that I didn't give you the proper credit. But she <laughs> suggested that. Um, and, oh, oh, before I forget, Classic Kevin literally went to the chair. Did you see I that? Saw, I saw Classic Kevin do exactly what he should have all along. The death chair. And he touched it. He touched it? No, he, he has a vit, vit picture. Cl that is not Classic Kevin. That is unclassic. That is dangerous, Kevin. D Kevin, you are living on the edge I don't support it, to be honest, because 
they're going to track you back to this episode and all of a sudden <laughs> oh, no. we're responsible. Oh, no. Well, the thing is, he did promise he wouldn't haunt us. So, well. I don't trust him. We, he, touched, he touched the chair. We should probably make him sign something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Suddenly I'm very. I'm glad you're not dead yet, Kevin. So, uh, well, as far as we know. Suddenly I'm very anxious. All right, Kevin. <laughs> but he did post photos of it and it was pretty incredible. Yeah, that I, we do. I definitely saw those It pictures. was pretty awesome. That's awesome. So thank, thank you. you for doing that for us. You took, was, you took our podcast to an interactive level. I mean, literally, uh, yeah, an interactive <laughs> experience. Um, a 5D <laughs> version. The, there was the cleaning lady who accidentally bumped it and died. So I know, Kevin's, that's my thought. I was like, she didn't even mean to touch it and she's dead. Exactly. So the fact that you didn't. And Kevin's physically touching it and taking a photo. So Kevin, got we some nerve. disclaimer, we have no, nothing to do with that. We're not responsible for you, Kevin. No. We're only proud. We are a little bit proud, and we want to use it to further our podcast. Yeah, but <laughs> exploiting you left and right right now. <laughs> we will exploit you, but we will not take credit for your death. Okay, cool. Anyway, on that note, hey, hey, hey. Anything else? Not that I know of. Okay. I went through that. I blew through that. Oh, Gio has something to say. Gio, do you have, do you have something to say? Here's the microphone. Say something. I love Emily. Oh, Gio. Wow, that was incredible. I taught him that. You heard it here first. Mm-hmm. Well, oh yeah, during the sleepover, I got to snuggle with Gio, and I woke up to his pretty little face right next Aww, to mine. It Gio was so woke her sweet. Up. Okay. All right, here we are. You ready to hear something really disturbing and fucked up? Yes. Okay. Is it worse than Sinister? I mean, like, it's part of the story. I'm not going to tell you right away. Oh, it's part of your story. I yeah. thought this was, like, some weird... No, I don't just, like, have fucked up things to tell you okay. for no reason at all. I thought this was just a fun thing we were doing. Hi, my good boy. You're so handsome. Can you imagine if he could like understand english like he would be fucked up if oh. he heard us talking about oh these yeah stories. i'm trying to get all my bad parenting out with a dog while i can oh i want to say i didn't mean to no. jump on your coattails there i am have a fourth nibbling <gasps> yay high five she was born last night i thought you were gonna say you were like pregnant or something and you alarmed me that's probably the last thing i'll ever say i know but you were like if i do say speaking it, of parenting it's a mistake <laughs> it's, like, it's not on purpose it's like what the fuck no, I Congrats. have. I now have a a third niece. That is. So, what's her name? Her name's Piper. Oh, that's right. Remember? Your favorite I told you name. about that. Though, actually, that's the reason I drank because my sister stole my baby name, because she got to have a baby first, so she just got to pick the name. Rude. And then she was like, "Oh, the baby's name's Piper," and I was like, "Oh, I hate you." <laughs> oh, so I have a documentation from 2011. I literally I showed Christine this weekend. I had that name on note on a a note in my phone. For the last, like, three years. Mm -hmm. So anyway, good luck, Piper. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Just to tell you, she just rolled her eyes so hard. There's nothing more petty than when I have a daughter, and I'll name her Piper, too. And I'll be like, here's my Piper. She's younger. And she's the the daughter of a podcast star. the new model. Okay. And her godfather is Geo, so you can't win. Aw. Okay. So anyway, congratulations. I'm glad I have three nieces now instead of two. And I do appreciate Piper, because she... Is a Gemini. Yay! Just and like us. My nephew's also a Gemini, so now out of oh, the shit. four, we got 50% of them as Geminis. Fab. And none are Scorpios. Fab. So, listen, you're winning in life. I'm gonna call that a success. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about something really fucked up. Sure. Um, Piper, someday you'll listen back on this episode and you'll think. Piper, I can't wait to emotionally damage you one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've already done a number on my other nieces and nephews, so <laughs> good luck. I can only imagine. Uh, okay, so I have never heard of this before, but um, I'm sure other people have. So sorry if you know all about this, but it took me for a loop because this was my first time experiencing it. It's in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. It's called the La Lori Mansion. Wait, is this the... I think I almost did this as a murder one this week. Interesting. Well, it's haunted, and I call it. I know, but is this? What if we had done the same one? That would have been so cool. We could have tag team. Maybe shit. we would have actually made time on an episode, and you wouldn't have that so much. <laughs> we do one story. <laughs> you do the crime part, and I do the aftermath. I, I think it, it. If you did it and you read the whole thing, I'm going to be so upset. No, I didn't read the whole thing, but it was definitely on my list of like. But possible. you haven't looked. No. Okay, because some of it is fucked up. So this in New Orleans is just called the haunted house. Like, really? Yeah, it's like. They, the you just, one. The haunted house of New Orleans, and people know what you're talking about. Uh, it is 1140 Royal Street, in case people want to go there and lose their minds. Good. Also, fun fact, uh, the house is also 
the inspiration for American Horror Story for the third season, which was Coven. And they mm. filmed in the house, um, but not... Like, they only filmed some scenes in the house. The majority of the filming was in another house on St. Louis Street, which I guess is nearby. Okay. Um, and the house is, like, the the bad guy in this story. Her name is Madame LaLaurie, I cool. guess. She was known as the cruel mistress of the haunted house, according oh. to papers. She was born in 1787. Um, her name was Delphine. And she was a member of a very large, wealthy family. Um, so, like, a lot of her relatives owned slaves. So she grew into that family where she also owned slaves. Fab. Um, in 1800, she married... Oh, I forgot about this. She married a man with a very long Spanish name. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Please, tell me what the name was. Am I going to do it? Yes. Okay, if I butcher it, sorry to the actual Spanish speakers. Do you Spanish know how many speakers. stupid foreign names I'm always picking? Yeah, but I have to, I'm gonna like try to do it in the dialect, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck it up. Okay, she married a man named Don Ramon de Lopez y Anguilla a Caballero de la Royal de Carlos. That was his whole name. Yeah. Holy Jesus. So Don Ramon. All right, let's go with Don. <laughs> uh, he was a Spanish officer, and four years later, they went to Spain on a trip and there's like differing accounts of what actually happened but somehow he passed away oh on that trip um but that's a long headstone like how but, did they fit all that on his tombstone don raymond oh right that's right <laughs> but then after he passed away she found out she was pregnant and gave birth to his daughter who has an equally long horrible name oh my god <laughs> which is maria borgia delfin lopez y Anguilla de la candelaria and they nicknamed her borquita oh so we're gonna call her marie and <laughs> <laughs> you're good at that. At uh, what? At the accent. Oh, well, I only work with all Spanish speaking people. That's true. I'm the only white one at my job, so I kind of have to know what I'm doing. But I also probably fucked it up, so really, who am I to talk? I'm sure it was great. So, anyway, um, when they went back to New Orleans from Spain, she got married to another guy named Jean Blanc. Ooh. And they had four more children, three of which were daughters, all three of which she also named Marie. What the fuck? And one was Mary Louise. The other one was Louise Mary, because I guess you have to change it up. <laughs> and then the third one, for safe measure, was also Mary Louise. Are you serious? So she had two Mary Louises out of her four Marys. What is her deal? And then she had a, a son named Jean-Pierre. And that husband also died over time. So once he died, one of the Marys had like some weird spine issue and so they were sending her to a physician who was basically like a chiropractor of the time mm -hmm. and his name was leonard lewis nicola lalori and she fell in love with him even though he's 20 years younger than her wow and uh so they got married and they bought the house that ended up being the mansion mm -hmm. and so they they stayed well there's different accounts that say that over time they split up or they stayed married like there's i don't know which one's accurate but no matter what they had like a bad marriage like they were fighting oh, all the time no. and neighbors knew that they were fighting and most of the reports say that lewis moved out okay and so that must be what like drove her crazy uh -oh. like most of the reports said that lewis moved out but there are other reports that say he like lived in the house but was unaware of what was going on so oh no, no anyway her neighbors began to suspect that something wasn't right because the slaves in their house were, like, like it was very weird how they treated them. Like, every now and then they would just be replaced for no explanation. Oh, my God. Or they would disappear and never be seen of again. And during the their entire stay in that house, 35 to 40 of the slaves disappeared or died from unexplained causes, oh according to the neighbors. God. So there's probably more than that. But according to the neighbors, that was how many they remembered missing. Holy shit. So one day, like, the thing that really set off that there was an issue in that house was one of the slaves was a 12-year-old girl named Leah. And one of the neighbors across the street saw her screaming <gasps> with Madame LaLaurie chasing her <gasps> with a whip. Oh, no. And I guess the story goes that Leah was brushing Madame LaLaurie's hair and, like, there was a knot, so she kind of, like, yanked on her head by accident. <gasps> and that was enough to, like, set the, the set chase off. on. Yeah. And so, uh, basically, 
Delphine, Madame Lori, she was chasing her with a whip, and then they got to the roof, and either the slave was so scared that she just jumped oh, off, or she, God. like, fell, and, like, either way, she died. She was 12? Yeah. Oh, that's heartbreaking. So after uh, the neighbor witnessed that, and people found out that this little girl had died... Um, there, I guess there was a law at the time that prohibited cruel treatment of slaves. I mean, you could have fucking slaves, but you just can't be mean to them. That was such a kindly law. <laughs> yeah, what a half-assed job at being nice. Yeah. But so I guess the authorities investigated what happened. and That's her... the most subjective law, by the way. You can't be mean <laughs> to them. I know. I know. Oh, you can God. be horrible, but not mean. Yeah, what the fuck? So um it was investigated and they found out that like maybe she wasn't being the nicest to her slaves so they like basically <laughs> maybe <laughs> they like impounded them and like like sold them off to auction oh so like she God. lost all of her slaves but um <sighs> madame lalori had an arrangement where like all of her friends and family would be at that auction so they all bought the slaves no. so she could buy them back from her friends so she ended up having them anyway she ended up getting them back that's fucked so Okay, so this is where it gets real neat. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Gut churning, my, I say. Oh, no. Okay. Good thing I had Trader Joe's mac and cheese for today. <laughs> um, okay, so April 10th, 1834. So 34 plus 13 is... <laughs> I was going to try and figure that out. 47. 47. <laughs> so a fire broke out in the house, which had, like, the fire department come and see what was going on. And they found out that a cook like intentionally started the <gasps> fire in the kitchen and when they went in to like take the fire out they found out that that cook was chained to the kitchen <gasps> like, oh no chained to the oven and the cook like ended up cursing them out and was like why did you do this i was trying to set the fire to kill us all <gasps> and she's like i'd rather be dead than have to live here for one more day so the firefighters like heard her say that and they started looking around for like the other slaves and they ended up telling Madame LaLaurie, we have to go into the attic to check for the embers. Mm -mm. And she's, like, super resistant, like, literally shoving them away from the attic. And they, like, push her away, get into the attic. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Just drink your wine. I can't breathe. They found more than a dozen slaves chained to the wall. Oh, my God. This is nervous laughter. This isn't funny. I'm totally just, like, nervous laughing. Some were strapped to makeshift operating tables. <gasps> Are you kidding? Some were confined in cages made for dogs. <gasps> human body parts were scattered around. Oh, no. And heads and human organs were placed half hazardly in buckets. half hazardly? Oh, no. <laughs> According to a newspaper oh, at the no. time, uh, the victims were naked, and the ones that weren't uh, a, like strapped to tables were chained to the wall. You ready? No, but okay, go. Some of the women had their stomachs sliced open and their insides wrapped around their waists. Huh? What? One woman had her mouth stuffed with animal poop, <gasps> and then her lips were sewn shut. <gasps> okay. Oh, my God. I'm going to have nightmares. Are you being real right now? <laughs> Do you want to read it? This sounds like... I mean, talk about American Horror Story. Like, Christ almighty. The men had... This is where I'm fucked up. Like, okay, I know this isn't that, even... We're not there yet? Okay. <laughs> I guess, okay, I have a really weird thing about this exact part of my body, so, like, for... It's like... Okay. A, all right. They had their fingernails ripped off. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Oh, who doesn't have a weird? Part? Wait, wait. It's worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. Okay. Had their fingernails ripped off. The men also had their eyes poked out. And are you kidding? Par private parts sliced off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just so nervous. One man hung in shackles. This is the fucking worst. Because it's not funny. I just don't know how else to handle this. One man hung, was was hanging with a... <laughs> I'm just going to highlight I'm it. like having a, a heart attack. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so <laughs> Is it the highlighted part? Yeah. I don't even yeah, want to look at bullets. it. Yeah, it's two bullets. It's two bullets. Okay, 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 okay. Em's having a full-on anxiety attack about this, so I'm going to read it even though I can't even really breathe. <clears throat> One man hung in shackles with a stick protruding from a hole. Huh? Huh? That had been drilled in the top of his head. Huh? Huh? It had been used to stir his brains. Oh my god. 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 I know. Oh my god. Give it away. I know. Oh my god. I know. I'm sweating. I know. I'm sweating and crying. Okay. And what the fuck? I just was so uncomfortable to say that. 
I'm so glad I was going to do this as a crime, <sighs> as a crime, a crime story. I'm lightheaded. I'm okay. glad you did this instead. Cause I was not about to read that stick protruding from a hole that had been drilled. Okay. In the top of his why head. are you reading it again? Cause uh-huh. I wanted to prove that I could do it. It had been used to stir his brains. As you know, I'm going to throw up. The tortures had been administered. Like every single one of the tortures that she did were clearly, um, not to bring quick death. Right. Like it was like, I'm here to like really just give you the most painful experience possible. <sighs> okay. That's stupid. For example, here are some additional ways. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Mouths had been pinned shut. Okay, that's my biggest one. Like you with the fingernails okay. minus the mouth. Okay, but with animal shit in your mouth. That's too? what I mean. That's like, it's like human cat human centipede. Like Ugh. that kind of thing makes me wanna die. Hands had been sewn to various parts of their own body. What the fuck? So like you can't like you're stuck. What the fuck? It's like you're constricted to your own body. Um <sighs> There was one woman whose arms and legs had been removed. Oh my god! And another. Who, was she alive? Yeah. Oh. These are the, okay, so, what the the note that I did have was, many of them had been dead for quite some time. Um, others were unconscious. Some cried in pain, begging to be killed and put out of their misery. However, there were a few who still clung to life, such as a woman whose arms and legs had been removed, and another woman who had been forced into a tiny cage with all of her limbs broken. <gasps> And oh my then, god! And then set again in odd angles, so she oh my god. so she looked like a crab. I know. M. So like crack, is, and then they set them is, in the wrong spot. Is, so she was. This is worse than I expected. I told you it was really messed up. This is like the most. How can a person even? So <sighs> their eyes were also removed, and their genitalia were castrated. Um, the ones whose limbs were hacked off were also alive still. There were mutilated sex change operations. <gasps> Um, and a woman whose limbs were removed in odd circular pieces of skin were removed to resemble a human caterpillar. So, like, she, like, like parts of her waist were just totally skinned. So, like, she looked like she had, like, ridges. I'm gonna throw up. Um, one had their face removed to resemble a gargoyle. For fuck's sake. Signed witness statements further proclaim that tongues, noses, and ears were hacked off and sometimes crudely reattached. Some eyes were gouged out, and both eyes and mouths were sewn shut. M. One slave was said to have their intestines removed and then hanging over them like a backpack. M. And another woman was uh, found with her back literally peeled so that you could see the tissue and muscles exposed. Other people had, were covered with honey and then stuck with fire ants. Oh. <sighs> okay, that's it. That's all. M. So is she, like... What? How can a person? How do you? I don't even. How do you explain that? That's I don't, not a person. That you can't. How can a human even? Uh, fuck. I don't even like. I feel like you don't even remember the things I listed because there were so many of them. I, and I don't even remember either. When I was, I was reading them, I forgot about half you, of them. I blacked out. Yeah, I'm trying to remember to. Breathe. I can't. I can't think of which one's worse. To be honest, but every one was worse than the last. Mm. Oh, okay. All I right. feel like every person in there like didn't even wish to be anyone else. No, totally. Did you, did she feed them? Like the ones that were still they alive? were still alive. They had to be she eating must, something. She must have come up there and fucking fed. The, uh, it makes me sick. Many of those that survived the treatment only died that day due to the smoke hil- inhalation from the fire. <gasps> It's like I mean, they were so close to making it up. But I mean, at that but point. But even, yeah, I would, in the 1830s, I no, could you really, like, ever have a life again? With no limbs, right? As a slave? No. How in the 1830s did you cut someone's limbs off and they survived? That's what I'm thinking. That's or, a lot of blood loss. Or slice someone's back open and they didn't get infected and die, you know? Yeah, or, like, cut their face off or... And then reattach it? She must have been... I just your eyes getting so shut. Oh, my God. That and the mouth thing is... I almost... Okay, this is not, like... I. Not like I'm cool with getting my mouth shut, but like if you're to sew your mouth shut or sew your eyelids shut, your eyelids have your eyeballs in them. Like if you miss, your eyeballs fucking poked. I know, but she was pulling you out know people's what? eyeballs anyway. Oh my god! Which it, it, again, remember how everyone was mad at me about the eyeballs? Now I feel like you're the bad bad guy. I'm glad. I mean, I'm I don't like myself particularly either. Mine was about two people. Yours is at least is about more than a dozen slaves. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> I hope none of them were children. Maybe that's why that girl ran. She was like, I'd rather jump. She's like, my that's fucking the mom out. is up there and I'd rather jump oh, off the roof. I forgot that her mom was probably there. <sighs> I'm going to kill myself. When trying to rebuild the house later after all of this happened, officials found numerous he- uh, human skeletons beneath the house in all sorts of positions uh-uh. and barely covered with soil, shreds of fabric, and, um, 
clothing was still adhered to their bones. <sighs> Some of the skulls had holes in them, as if they were earlier experiments of stirring brains. I am, like, cold to my bone right now. That is just sick. So the authorities concluded that the bodies were those of former slaves, their bodies buried um, to hide the fact that they were killed in there. Many believe, though, here's a possible upside in the world, that the story, most of, like, the more gruesome versions were written about in just one magazine called the New Orleans Bee, which in the 1830s was considered to be, like, a National Enquirer. Uh So, like, they're hoping that, like, for as gruesome as it was, hopefully it wasn't true. And the national, or not the national, the New Orleans Bee said that their informant was the next door neighbor who had a crush on Madame LaLaurie. Oh, why? Why would he do that? Because nobody, so nobody knew that she was this fucked up. Like, she was known as, like, a wealthy slave owner who, like, just had, like, a shitty marriage. Like, no one knew anything else. Sure. And so he had a crush on her, and then I guess because it was unrequited, they think, like, maybe he was if kidding. you were the informant for the New Orleans Bee, maybe you were just, like, trying to get back at her. Like a revenge. So, yeah, so the hope is that he was just being vengeful and saying horrible things, and this didn't actually happen to anyone. All right. What's next? I don't believe you that that's No, it. no, that's the grossest stuff that you will hear from me. My skin is crawling. I want to throw up. I have no faith in humanity. Cool. That's how most of us feel these days. Usually that's how you feel after my stories. I mean... That's how I feel all of 2017. I'm actually pretty pleased that you took this story instead of me, because I have this on my list of potential stories. So, um, in papers, after this all came out, um, Madame LaLaurie was called a monster, she was called a demon in the shape of a woman, Mm -hmm. and she was called Fury Itself Escaped from Hell. Wow. So, despite, like, the, that one newspaper that, like, gave all of the details, and they don't know if they were, like being way accurate compared to everyone else or if they were just lying whatever the truth is um that day when the slaves were getting pulled out to like go to the hospital uh nearly two thousand townspeople came to like see what was happening so everyone found out and out of sheer like shock and disgust and like betrayal because they all saw her as like a good person they all got pissed and they started to um like, slowly turn into a mob that night. Uh-oh. Which, like, kind of proud for the 1830s defending slaves like that. I, I am surprised a like, little bit. kind of hard to believe, but at least they kind of had a brain for a minute. I mean, I guess mob mentality, you can kind of switch to any sure. opinion, but yeah. So, the mob chased her out of her house, and she was never seen again in the area. Like, she, like, that night fled. And she ended up fleeing to France, and she could have moved back before she died, or she passed away in Paris. There's, like, more evidence showing that she passed away in Paris. Okay. Um, I guess there were, like, records that, like, show her, like, death certificate there. Okay. But, um, anyway, so that's the story of her. That's, like, the history of how she's involved in the house. But are, is her, are her daughters anywhere, or did they, were they out? They all went to Paris with her. Like, oh. she fled with the family. Okay. Um... So following the Civil War, the mansion turned into an all-girls school in 1874. So 40 years later, because it had been pretty much vacant since then. Wow. And so um, it was only uh, an all-girls school for like a year because the White League, which is... That sounds like the worst thing. (laughs) Yeah. Forced black children to leave. Oh, oh no. And uh, later, even though it then became an all-white school for a while... A segregationist school board changed things completely and made the school for only black children. Okay. Um, This also only lasted for a year because uh, the first reports of paranormal activity were showing up. Because all of the um, black children were reporting physical assaults (gasps) from the same woman who carried a whip. (gasps) Oh, no. So, I think it was an all-girls school still. Okay. Okay. But so the young girls were, like, known to approach all these teachers with, like, like cuts and <gasps> scratches on them. And people would say, who did this to you? And they all said that woman and, like, would describe her. Oh, God. So after it was a school for those two short years, it was also a music conservatory, a bar, a furniture store, a whole bunch of other things. It was apartments for a while. But none of them could keep open for very long. Oh, so, like, geez. the furniture store... Um, the owner first thought that there were, like, vandals um, in the store at night because he was coming back to the store and there was, like, this, like, dark, smelly liquid everywhere. Oh, ew. 
And he finally waited up one night with a shotgun, hoping <gasps> that they would show up. <laughs> oh, no. And he literally just turned around, and all of a sudden, the, the like dark, smelly liquid was all over his oh, merchandise again. Oh, I have gun. chills. Um, and so the next day, he closed up shop for good. No surprise there. No. Other than that, anyone who's tried to live in the house has suffered either financially or health-wise, with a lot of them dying in there. So the, the first man who bought the house in the 1840s, like, right after all this happened, like, only three years later. Can you imagine buying a house three years after all that garbage happened, like, with, like, the slaves? No. And having all that juju in there. Like, even if, even if you don't believe in any yeah, of it. just get it blessed. Like, you don't have to be the most religious person on earth, but get your house blessed. Like, Blaze is the most straight-laced per He would never move into that house. Yeah. Just knowing what happened there. Yeah. Just on principle. So, one man bought it. Um, he tried he tried living there for, like, three months, and it didn't work because he kept feeling like people were staring at him, and he kept hearing all these weird sounds. So he left and tried leasing it to other people, and they only stayed, like, a few days before they moved out. Like, they couldn't handle it either. Oh, jeez. So that's what ended up keeping the place abandoned for several years. Uh, eventually, by, like, the 1900s, there were other people who were living there. Um, one died just days after buying the place. Oh, my God. Uh, another one ended up in an asylum. Another one <gasps> ended up in a coma. Oh, my God. Another guy died in the house. Jesus Christ. Um, and then come, like, the 1890s, so, like, still around the, right before the 1900s started. Right. Um, the, there was, a like, that immigrant movement, so a bunch of Italians moved into New Orleans. Oh. So landlords were, like, quickly building, like, putting buildings back together to, like, try to rent them out to all these people. Mm-hmm. And they had uh, so many families move into that house, and nobody could stay. <gasps> One of the tenants was found brutally murdered. Oh, my God. And his belongings were ransacked. So I think it could have just been a robbery, but also that's, like, the fifth person to die in that house said sure. the slaves. Yeah. In regards to that murder, the cops were interviewing, like, everyone he knew. And his friends said that days before he got murdered, the guy was saying he was having problems with the sprites in his house. <gasps> like the sp- Ew! The spirits in his house. And his friend claimed that there was a demon in the house who wasn't going to rest until he died. Okay. Pause. Does sprites mean like spirits? Yeah. Is that like an old sprites time? was spirit back oh. then? Oh, I thought it meant like little elves. No, what the? Why is, is that it? scarier? Because isn't that, no, I just isn't that a thing? Maybe, I don't know. The most famous owner of the house was um, Nicholas. Hey, an elf or a fairy? I just looked it up. Oh my god. Okay. I'm just saying. I thought there were little elves in his house, which is creepy as fuck. It's not Santa's house. This isn't if fairies or elves who want to kill him. It sounds pretty scary to me. Okay. Anyway. The most famous owner of all and, like, one of the most recent people to buy the house was in 2009. Nicolas Cage bought the house. Uh, Shut the fuck up. But get this. As soon as he bought it, like, two years later, he ended up losing all of his money and went bankrupt. So, like... Fucking Nicolas Cage. So, like, no good luck has come out of that place. And he became the worst meme of all time. So, it's like, good luck to (laughs) you. Currently, it's either owned by this, like, energy trader in Texas. Like, there's, like, there's different reports of... I don't know how recent these were, but... He owned it for a while and was using it to entertain friends, and he still could be doing that, or it's now been um, sent over into, like, it's like a realtor's office and luxury apartments, which I can't imagine people wanting to live in. No, I mean, at that point, it's like, why even try anymore? I know. So anyway, here are the the short but sweet list of the manifestations that have happened in this place. Oh, God. Over time. They've got to be bad. Multiple accounts of... Tortured screams, <gasps> rattling chains in the kitchen and on the staircase. One resident reported that a black man in chains appeared and attacked him on a stairwell. <gasps> Some have... This is the most fucked up one. Some have witnessed hallucinations of their own pets being butchered in the house. Oh my... Oh my... Nope. Never moving there. Uh, children have been attacked by a phantom with a whip, just like in when sure. there was a school. People just passing the building or on a tour have felt incredibly nauseous. They've heard screaming. They've heard sobs. Um, children have immediately heard, um, like, moans and groans and smelled burning flesh. Jesus Christ. Children uh, children are like, Mommy, I smell that- burning <laughs> flesh. Mommy, I think I know that smell. <laughs> um, there have been scratches on the floorboards that people have heard and then turned around and there were, like, were actual scratches. <sighs> One tenant was going up the stairs and was blocked by this giant man, who we thought was a real man, he tried to push the figure out of his way because he felt intimidated, and his hand went through him, and then the man dissolved in front of him. Ugh. Uh, there's also been reports of a pale, black-haired woman that chokes people while they're sleeping. Who's that? I don't know. Oh. 
But there's another shadow person that follows the one that chokes you, and he stops her from killing Really? You. Yeah. That's wild. Like a, like a superhero ghost. A superhero shadow person. Yeah. <laughs> um, so shadow figures have also chased people with, like, bull whips jeez um there have been terribly maimed translucent apparitions who will show up when you're sleeping to show you their scars oh my god pretty fucked up that is so fucked imagine, up imagine like a ghost without legs or arms just like bobbing towards you I, it, like it's fucked up um fuck you <laughs> one woman saw a female spirit that looked a lot like madame lalori who and the, the spirit was bent over and, like, talking to her baby. Like, the woman's baby was watching... The woman was watching a ghost talk to her baby. Oh, no! Don't get the fuck away from her baby, dude. Throughout the years, neighbors have reported the mansion's windows opening and closing by themselves, the front door opening by itself, and people um, have also reported getting their bags yanked off of them or their hair yanked behind them. Uh, one time, a guide uh, was like standing under a bunch of street lamps that had been burnt out. And as soon as she said the little slave girl, Leah, as soon as she said Leah's name, all the lights in the whole neighborhood went on. Ugh. And when she said Leah's name again, they shut down again. Jesus. Uh, people wake up in the middle of the night to see, uh, Madame LaLaurie staring at them while they sleep. That is my nightmare. And the same, that same figure will stare at, uh, people who pass by the house at night. Some, uh, some have even seen the reenactment of the young girl jumping off the roof to her death. <gasps> like, have seen Baby. a little girl falling off the roof and then reported it later. Like, called people to say a girl fell off the oh, roof. Oh, shit. And they're like, no, that's just what happens. Oh, my God. And then at night you can hear the little girl sobbing, especially near the courtyard fountain where she died. Where she, like, landed when she fell. Oh, I've, I've had chills through this whole story. So that's that. Uh, I think this is probably the first time in podcast history that uh, your story was more fucked up than mine. Yay! Not to say... Um, are you tweeting at me? No. I really am not. Um, not to say that my story is not fucked up, because it is fucked up. Mm -hmm. sh assuredly. Mm -hmm. But yours was pretty fucked up. It was, it was pretty darn fucked up. Anyway. It was it was pushing the boundaries of like is yours not fucked up? What's happening? I want to know all about it. I just said mine's fucked up, but yours was pushing the boundaries of being unmanageable for me almost. Woohoo. So, here we go. <laughs> Let's just get Hold on. I need to refill this. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. To I'm... be rumbled? Yes, I am. Okay. I have a story for you about Philip Markoff. Okay, I don't know who that is. Good. My goal now... Uh, someone uh, left us a review that was like, your stories are too... Everyone knows about the people you cover. So I was like, well, fine. Well, I'll whoops. try harder. Um, so, I'm, fuck <laughs> you. Em's like tweeting me. I'm not tweeting you. You asked if I was tweeting you. Em says, I'm not tweeting you. And then I have a tweet on my phone that says, M. Schultz, X Teen Schieffer, now I'm tweeting you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not entire. That was... Okay. Okay. So, Philip Markoff was born on February 12th, 1986. Okay. To a normal, upstanding family in New York State. Okay. His father was a dentist. Okay. Very seemingly normal. Uh, he was a member of the National Honor Society, the History Club, the Youth Court, the school golf team, and the school bowling team, which I forgot to tell you, I also found it at my high school. God. Because I was cool. Well, you were something. I had a bowling ball, and um, I had it custom-made. Oh, wait, I had a custom-made bowling ball, too. Really? I'm not kidding. What was yours named? The bowling ball? Oh, well, mine had a name. You named your bowling <laughs> ball? <laughs> what? Like it's a pet rock? His name was Captain Midnight. Why? Oh, why not? It... <laughs> I don't know a single sport where people name the ball. Well, now you do. Our, I didn't name mine. I just had a custom Fine, one. Fine. You're so cool. Okay. Remember how I said I founded a Scrabble squad at my school? I also founded a bowling team. There's nothing cool about anything you've ever done. But it's all at least one of a kind. I'll give you that. Thank you. You're definitely unique. There's nothing cool about running a true crime paranormal podcast out no, of my living room. Not. So I'm not sitting here pretending I'm better than you. I'm just saying. Drinking boxed wine. So it's not like, you know, I'm trying to be anyone I'm not. But... <laughs> 
Okay, that's my only association with this guy. Just gonna, you know, cool. give you that little fun fact. Okay. Um, after graduating high school, Philip attended, I don't know how you say it, SUNY? Yeah, SUNY. SUNY Albany. Oh, my aunt went there. Really? Maybe they knew each other. He went for pre-med, and he graduated in 07. Then... He started med school at Boston University. Oh, no. <laughs> I like how I said that. So excited. <sighs> well, finally, we're talking about our own alum. Be you. Um, in 2005, when he was still at SUNY Albany, he met Megan McAllister, who was a young woman who worked, who volunteered with him at the Albany Medical Center Hospital ER. Mm-hmm. Um, a few years later, when they lived in Boston together, uh, they blah, 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 a few years later, they were living together in Boston, and they were engaged to be married on August 14th, 2009. Aww. Um, and Megan was planning on starting med school that fall as well. Okay. What are you doing over there? I wanted to find my You're bowling ball. me. No, I wanted to find the bowling ball. This was it. <laughs> and then, on the other side, he's like, holy shit. He's like chasing him through the cheese. That's actually really great. I know. Where'd you get that? I was on the Cartoon Network Bowling League. How is that a thing? How how is your Scrabble Squad a thing? We all have something weird. <laughs> all right, fair. <laughs> Swig your wine. Mm-hmm. At least mine had a name. Uh, okay, so they were uh, engaged to be married on August 14, 2009. And Megan was planning on starting med school as well. And the way Megan described their relationship was as loving and close. Um, she said they were happy but a little bit lonely uh, she said they didn't have many friends. Um, he had a couple of friends at BU, uh, but they didn't hang out with people that much because they didn't have money to go out. So they were at home most of the time because they were living dollar to dollar. So he was in med school and they were basically living off student loans. Um, so they really didn't have a lot of money to right. like spend on extracurriculars and stuff like that. Maybe they went to Tasty Burger and Cornwalls like we did. Oh, I miss Cornwalls. I loved Cornwalls. That was a great. That's where I met Danielle. That oh really? Yeah. That's where you met her? Mm-hmm. I thought you guys met in class. Mm-mm. Oh, so once a month, once or twice a month, they went to Foxwoods Resort Casino in Connecticut, which, by the way, I've been to many times because Blaze's Aunt Lisa, who's a comedian, um, performs there every year for Christmas. She does like oh, a cool. Christmas show there. Lisa Lampanelli. Um, but so anyway, they ever once or twice a month they'd go to Foxwoods Resort. Um, and he would play blackjack and she would watch and she said he wasn't a heavy gambler, but like if, uh, he was up, he'd keep playing. And if he lost money, he would stop. So he also apparently seldom went to class. Um, and instead he would read his professor's lecture notes online. Um, and she said, I mean, we're in the apartment 24 seven. He doesn't have a life because he's in medical school. Okay. Unfortunately. He did have a life. She just didn't know about it. Hey, Bam. You got it. Okay. I thought I might. She didn't know that he had another side to him. At least that's what I wrote, but yours was better. Aww. In April of 2009, Megan went home to New Jersey to plan the wedding, and the two of them talked every night on the phone. Uh, Later that month, she returned, and on April 20th, they were driving down to Foxwoods Casino, as they did, on I-95 South when they were pulled over, and Philip was arrested. Why, though? It turns out that while she was gone... On April 10th, 2009, Philip contacted an escort named... Wait, April 10th? Uh Uh-huh. That's the same date that the fire was for (gasps) the Lori Mansion. What? Wow. Happy anniversary. How creepy. Okay, anyway, go. Well, on April 10th, 2009, Philip contacted an escort named Trisha Leffler through Craigslist, and when they met at the Weston Copley place, which is where my... Copley! Which is where my dad stayed when he visited me. So, turning that into a nice little moment that shouldn't exist uh he oh wow i can relate to this story good he bound gagged and robbed her there Holy shit four days later he murdered julissa brisman who had posted an ad on craigslist offering uh erotic massage services in the copley marriott um two days later on april 16 2009 he attempted to rob corinne stout who had offered lap dance services on craigslist at a holiday in express in warwick rhode island and law enforcement figured out the three crimes were related. Uh, they tracked emails he had sent uh, Brisman, who was the woman who was murdered, to mm-hmm. his apartment in Quincy, Massachusetts. Aww. And one of his victims had identified him from a picture. When police took him in for questioning that day, he was wearing the shoes he wore the night of Brisman's killing, and her blood was spattered on the shoes. <laughs> and Yikes! There's a photo of the shoes online, and you can see literal blood spatter 
on the shoes. And I'm like, oh my. why would you wear those again after there's blood on them? I know. Burn them. What's wrong with you? Burn them. <sighs> Buy new shoes. So he pled guilty. I'm sorry. He pled not guilty to all charges. Um, his friends and his fiance Megan, uh, jumped to his defense immediately. She was like, he wouldn't hurt a fly. He's beautiful inside and out. His friends and family even made a Facebook page defending him. Oh, wow. Um, and then the evidence started to pile up and Megan realized what her fiance was, was up to. Yeah. was really up to, it was really alarming because nobody expected this. Um, so there was a book written by a woman named Linda Fairstein called Killer Charm. And in the, in the expert I read, in the expert, in the excerpt I read, um, she said that investigators found a stash of women's underwear Yummy. Um, from his victims in the springs of the bed that he shared with his fiance. Um, he, detectives also found zip ties, like the kind that robbery victims were usually bound right. with right, right, right. and a semi-automatic gun in a hollowed out copy of Grey's Anatomy which is like what med students it's like their bible basically right um so he had a gun hidden not in the a movie not the show is Grey's Anatomy wait what, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of okay. totally rock with that and I was like I yeah, know I saw it- I did see a little bit of your face being like what okay Grey's Anatomy is a really old medical book Really? It's spelled G-R-A-Y, Grey's Anatomy. And it's like an anatomy book from a bajillion years ago. I thought this was like you were talking about like the he show. Had, he had a DVD collection. I was wondering why you just skimmed over that without cracking a joke. I was like, no, no, when, no, I, no. when I murder, I carry around sex in the city. In like, my- I- <laughs> <laughs> no. So there's this guy named Henry G- Gray and he wrote a book called Grey's Anatomy. And it's like the book. Basic. I mean, truly, the it's Bible. called like the Bible for med students. And then, does he have one? Gray. Grace? Yeah. Oh. And it's called. It's basically the Gray's. So Gray's Anatomy was written, and Shonda Rhimes named her Meredith Gray with an E. Oh. Uh, so it was like a play on Gray's Anatomy gotcha, gotcha. and Gray's Anatomy. Shonda is a wise girl. Listen, I'm taking uh, an on like a master class from her online. She is. Is she your instructor? Yeah, she does like. Um, video to like does she actually like email you back uh you can like submit questions and things like that and submit your work and she'll like look at it it's pretty fucking dope okay so he had a gun in a hollowed out copy of his Grey's anatomy book basically Mm -hmm. um on april 29th um megan's attorney so she had her own attorney his fiance uh, accompanied her to visit her fiance in jail and said that the couple's wedding plans were, quote, dismantled. Uh, she visited him again on June 11, 2009, and um, told Philip, her fiance, that she was going to med school and said it would be a long period of time, if ever, before she would ever see him again. Hmm. I believe it. Yep. Uh, actually, the creepy thing is that I looked into this and their wedding. You know how people have, like, wedding websites and right. stuff? Their wedding site, people took screenshots. And so their wedding site is obviously, like, not still up, but you can still look through it and see, like... Oh, no. It's so sad. Oh, no. Like, oh, how we met and how he proposed. It was, like, a little quiz. And it's online. You can find it? Yeah, photos of it, not yes. the actual site. But they were registered at Macy's, Williams, Sonoma, and Pottery Barn, in case you were wondering. I was. I totally was. I know you were. Uh, apparently... Um, while he was in prison, uh, Philip had made several apparent suicide attempts. Um, the first thing that happened was that jail officials found shoelace marks around his neck on April 23rd, 2009, three days after his arrest. So they placed him under suicide watch Okay. in the psychiatric unit. Uh, the second incident was on the night that his fiance broke up with him. Uh, he attempted to slice his wrist with a spoon that he had sharpened to a point. Oh, shit. Using concrete in his cell. Oh, my God. And then he was taken off suicide watch a few days later. Uh, in the third incident, which was August 14th, 2009, the day his wedding had been scheduled to take place, mm. he was found to have stashed medication and was taken to a medical facility. That sucks. On April 21st, 2009... Um, <laughs> I want to know. Tell me. On April twenty first, two thousand nine, um, he was transported from Boston Police Headquarters to the Nashua Street Jail. Uh, he stuffed wads of toilet paper down his pants, telling detectives, "I might need this later." 
Uh, okay. Um, I mean, that's true. We all need toilet paper later. <laughs> they were like, okay, you might have to It's poop. like, oh, you're savvy and practical. Sure. Sure. You had burritos for breakfast. We get it. <laughs> um, so when he actually... <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So on the one-year anniversary of what was supposed to have been his wedding with Megan, uh, Philip wrote his ex fiance's name Megan in blood on the wall of his cell and killed himself. Oh, my. Uh, he used... At a, least her name wasn't, like, Elizabeth. Like, like a, a long, long fucking name. You mean, like, the Spanish name that you read earlier? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Delphine, blah, 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 blah. That Murray. <laughs> uh, so what he did was he used an object shaved into a razor to slash major arteries in his ankles, legs, and neck. Oh, my God. Wrote Megan in blood, wrapped his wounds in plastic, covered his head with a plastic bag, stuffed toilet paper down his throat <gasps> so that jail authorities could not resuscitate him, then oh covered my. himself head to toe with a blanket. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my <sighs> God. So jail authorities saw a, the blanket not moving for many hours, and they went to do like a, a live and well check on him, yeah. and he was gone. Um, he had also written something that looked to be like the word pocket. They weren't sure what it read, but it looked like it was the word pocket uh, in blood as part of his elaborate suicide. Um, the It was just very awful for his victim's family because they were hoping to have the trial and confront him about her last moments and right, right, right. what really happened. Um, but he killed himself and never gave them that opportunity to know what happened Jeez. Um, and never get any sort of resolution or closure um and his as far as i know um megan and she did go to med school um and well good one good thing happened i, mean, for I know her. i think she actually She's out of student loans <laughs> <laughs> yeah what i read was that she went to med school in the caribbean because oh must she be nice to go well because she needed to get away from um Right. It was Everything. Like a hugely publicized case. So she went to med school in the Caribbean. And as far as I know, she now has her med degree and is like off the grid trying to Good for her. stay away from um, all of the. But I mean, can you imagine being she was and they actually have the police transcripts like the um, interrogation transcripts mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you can read them. And it is I mean, she is like, what is going on? Like, should I be scared? Like, yeah did he do something what's going like she was so shocked and stunned and his family had no idea and so he's been um he's been um I'm losing my words compared wow <laughs> related stroke number three uh, seriously so many strokes <laughs> he's been um compared to ted bundy because i mean he's been classified as a, a psychopath um, but well, also he could be compared to Ted Bundy because you said that he was raised by like an actual normal family. Exactly, and he, nobody had any. I mean, a lot of times, like with um, psychopaths and sociopath, sociopaths, it's like at the very least they showed some signs. But with him, it was like he had this whole facade, and right just his, out of the blue, his fiance was like, "We're so happy," and had no idea, yeah, that he was storing underwear in in their mattress, and it wasn't a thing, and it was. What I read was like, sure, they were in denial, but at the same time, it was like, she on a, on a conscious level truly had no idea what was yeah. going on. Um, so it was very dark and sad. Um, but yeah, so he is known as the Craigslist killer. Okay. Um, and it it is kind of disturbing because he was described as handsome and all American and how right, could right, he right. do this? And it's like, okay, but being handsome doesn't equate to like, you're innocent. Right, right. Sure. But, um, so vanity. He, yeah, so it was kind of an interesting case, um, but he was, I mean... Bad news bears. He was arrested, but he uh, didn't really give anyone a chance to punish him, so who knows. But poor Megan, I hope she's... Yeah, it's not good. ...doing well. I tried to look her up, and she's, like, off the grid, so... I don't blame her. I don't either. I'd be the same way. I'm glad for her, honestly. Well, good. That one didn't disturb me nearly as much as the... Oh, yeah, the yours... Mansion. No, yours was... That, that one took us all for a ride, I think. Wow. We, wow, we went dark places. <laughs> dark, dark places. Do you have a geo horoscope? Yep. 
I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, I got one. Okay, J.O., listen up. This is important. This is for you. Daily horoscope. Scorpio. Ugh. What did I call it that one time? Horoscorpio. <laughs> I was ready I to say it, it again. I called it a geoscope or a oh, yeah, yeah. horoscorpio. God damn it, Geo. He's such a brat. I've spoken like a true Scorpio. Hey, handsome man. Come here. Can you come here? Can you sit? Okay, listen up. Okay. Some real heat has been growing between you and another person. <laughs> yes! But it might not be exactly the kind you were hoping for. It's platonic. Be open to all possibilities because you still have a lot to gain from building this relationship. It's true. I'll help you. Being more flexible about your expectations is a good idea because polarity in your life is going to force you to go back and forth between disparate tasks or people. Gio, I love you. Is it disparate or disparate? Disparate. 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 I don't know what to do with that, Gio, but it's right about one thing. I love you more than anything on earth. You're so <laughs> handsome. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, you know what I should do is read the Gemini Scorpio. Oh, yeah. But that also relates to both of us and Gio, which is just going to be so we're, fucked up. We're going to take it in two very different ways. Oh, baby Gio, it's okay. Let me see that face. You're so handsome. Well, let's not read the sexual compatibility. Yikes. Gio, no thank you. But I will give you so many kisses. This is just like the never end. Oh, his head did that little doggy ear tilt I know, thing. I don't like it. Gio, it's okay. Honey, come here. Psst. Have a French fry. Can you imagine if every instance that we were even slightly nervous about, someone just handed us a French fry? Oh, it would be great. I'd be like, wow. I'm I would gonna... live in like despair on purpose. <laughs> I know, I'd be like, I'm paranoid. Feed me always. Everything upsets me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. So we're not going to do the, probably for the best, if we just don't even know my my compatibility. With. Oh, it's all about sexuality, the ones I keep reading, so. Yikes. I don't want to read that about you and Geo. Thanks, anyway. I don't either. Okay, good. Um, Thank you guys for listening. Thank you. We, uh, now that it is June, you have listened to our most recent listener story. Mm-hmm. Which means the next one comes out July 1st. Yay. Um, God. I know. I don't know Time how it feels like it, it goes so fast. I know. So anyway, uh, that also means that the next deadline to uh, get merchandise for the next shipment is July 1st. Yay! So if you want to become a donator and get some nice merchandise from us, you can find us at our Patreon. You can find us on our website, and that's why we drink.com. We're getting all our next round of shipments ready to go, so yep. let us know. That's... It so far. I think keep sending in your stories, please. Ugh. We really we love your listener stories. We will get to all of them. It we just have so many good ones. Takes a matter of time. And thank you all for just being you cuz I know I keep being so emotional, but you guys are just <laughs> so great. I can't You get guys a... are being way nice to us. I mean, it's beyond anything I ever expected. So, that's that. We love you all. And that's, and that's why, why we, we drink. drink. Okay, you said it so somberly. And, and that's, that's why, why we drink. <laughs> We both know to do that. I don't know. <laughs> That's very odd. Okay, bye. <laughs>